Okay, Michael Brown, another question from uh, Renewable Nation from Jennifer. Hi, I was wondering, when beginning to consider a solar project for your home, how would you know whether placing solar panels onto your roof would somehow damage the roof structure or avoid the warranty? And how would you find out if you live in an area where it snows a lot, if your rooftop would be able to hold the weight of both the snow and new solar panels? Right away, let's go towards warranties. So would installing a solar system void the roof warranty? <clears throat> and the answer to that is no. Even if the roofer says it will, it's not because they're a contractor, right? So they're liable for the work that they contract and also permit for. With the exception of attachments or external installations, not relating to the actual roof, which would include a solar system. So uh, the roofing company would absolutely not be liable for the attachments for your solar system and or any electrical roof boxes associated with your solar system. Uh, and or if the solar system were installed in a way to cause water damming or uh, not give uh, enough proper ventilation so that the roof would uh, stay wet all the time and or not uh, be able to shed debris, okay? And these are all things that uh, good contractors will pay attention to. And because we're on the warranty kick, let's go towards what you should be looking for with a contractor that uh, sells solar systems. You should be looking for a contractor that's been around long enough uh, so that you can be sure that they know what they're doing. And then in your contract, you need to be looking for warranty specific to your roof regarding the solar, okay? Because if there aren't any there, the solar contractor might just throw up their hands and or the company that's just soliciting and then subcontracting the workout might just throw up their hands and say, go to your roofer, or that's not our problem, or whatever, because it's not part of your contract. Um, so make sure that there is a warranty section specifically regarding your roof and the attachments in the sealant uh, regarding your solar system, okay? From your, con from your solar contractor, because the roofer is absolutely not obligated or under any uh, legal uh, liability to repair your roof regarding the solar system. It's just kind of like if you get uh, uh, aftermarket stuff installed on, you know, other parts of your house which had a warranty, well, they're not covering that work, right? Because they didn't do it, they didn't sell it, they didn't install it, so they have no idea how good it is. Let's move on to uh, loads. Okay, so the specific question was about snow <clears throat> and uh, uh, what would a solar system add as far as load to your roof, which you have to kind of understand some terms. There's a dead load and a live load. Dead load means that's the weight on your roof. That's what's just actual uh, providing gravity, um, pressure towards the earth uh, from above. <clears throat> and then there's live load. Live load would be what the uplift, what the... Uh, um, the load would be in a wind situation, you know, where the actual uh, roof might lift off of your house, which would be a, in a, um, a high wind area. That's a big concern. And dead load is a concern in areas where there's a lot of snow. <clears throat> so a solar system generally is only going to add, and that's a system with racking, um, would only add three pounds per square foot, okay? So that's really what you're coming down to. And then you're coming down to how is that attachment schedule spread out uh, per actual attachment on your roof. So that comes down to <clears throat> doing the math. It's always uh, less than 100 pounds per uh, attachment that you're adding to your roof. Um, so it's not a significant amount. Now, um, snow loads. So snow loads, there's a lot of things uh, that the solar industry uses from uh, and has incorporated and companies that have dealt with snow and roofs have come into the solar industry like a company called S5 
which deals with snow retention, okay? And so one of the things that you don't want on your roof, uh, and which is actually, so if you have a solar system on your roof and you're in a high snow area, you probably have a, a higher pitch than what we have down here in Florida traditionally, because that's what you're trying to do, is you're trying to not have accumulation of snow on, on your roof because it can add a lot of weight, right? And, and all those calculations are already done on your house in the construction process. So if there is a concern with your contractor or yourself, and the building department's gonna have regulations for that as well. So, so long as your system is engineered and permitted for the region you're in, you should be fine. Now getting back to uh, how northern high snow areas are designed, your architecture, is designed so you don't have this high accumulation of snow. A solar system is actually going to reduce the uh, probability of snow buildup on your roof, except for in um, uh, extremely low temperature uh, and high snow per uh, precipitation. So one of the things that you need to look out for is what you're looking for is if you do have this accumulation of snow on your roof is you now should have snow retention so and this may or may not be required by your building department but it's something to be very aware of the reason why there is snow retention equipment sounds like it doesn't make any sense but it does because the edge of roofs are generally where people uh, exit and enter buildings and it's where there's a lot of noise and things like that. And what you'll have is a mini avalanche of possibly thousands of pounds of frozen water on your roof, which everybody looks at, you know, TV and the wonderful let's dive in the snow and everything else like that. But there are many cases of people dying and being crushed and suffocated <clears throat> and injured um, by uh, um, large, uh, blocks of uh, frozen water. It's not, a, you know, solid blocks of ice, so it's not as bad as that, but it's pretty bad and can be. Um, so you do want to take that into consideration um, probably more than you want to worry about the snow load. The snow load is going to be determined by the engineering through your contractor and then the building department is going to review that engineering and make sure that it's accurate um, and then they're going to be liable for that okay so as contractors in your region so long as you're making sure that your contractor is pulling permits and also engineering the uh, the attachments and what's actually going to be uh, put on your building as long as it's engineered properly and then the building department reviews it and okays it, <clears throat> you're okay, okay? So if there is a failure, it might not be the so solar company. It might actually be the builder of your structure um, that flubbed his engineering, okay? If there was such a thing. And that's not as common as it used to be. Okay, so building departments are much more strict and, and inspectors are much better than they used to be. Um, you know, some of us in the building industry would say too much so, but uh, you know, they're definitely earning their keep. Transition over there into live loads, and that would be, um, we're in Florida, so we have a very high wind loading here. So attachment schedules can go to 1.7, a factor of 1.7 per solar module to three um, per solar module, depending on uh, how close you are to a body of water and how far south you are, uh, because the uh, probability and likelihood of uh, high winds and hurricanes and things like that increase uh, closer to bodies of water and also open spaces, right? So um, I imagine there's places in Oklahoma and Kansas that have the same wind loading that we have. <laughs> so, uh, and without being anywhere near a body of water or the ocean. So there's those things to consider. Um, and also uh, to uh, be kind of aware of companies that offer this rackless solar or railless solar. Okay, so, and this is a mounting system that is going to 
your solar modules or panels as most people call them have to be attached at least in four places right so if there's no rail that means you have four attachments per module okay so and you know in a row you might have some that share that attachment so your factor might go down by one in a row so you might only have like a factor of three but even in low wind uh, areas and just uh, uh, high dead load areas you're still going to have that huge number of attachments and in those types of racking systems there's absolutely no way that you're going to hit trusses every single time so your actual attachment hardware is going to have to be put on your deck with multiple lag bolts versus one because you're not going into a truss you're not going to have complete thread embedment up to two inches or even three because there's no such thing as roof decking that is that thick okay so you have to have something that will meet the uh, the engineering requirements and also you want something that can be tightened up and sealed so you don't have leaks <clears throat> Um, so, and most of that hardware would uh, increase the number of actual penetrations into your roof by a factor of six. <laughs> okay, this is not six, this is six. With this system, there's no looking for the rafters. We have a specially designed deck screw. The feet come with pre-installed butyl on the base plate. So there's no tar, there's no, no silicone. Uh, be aware of that as well as that type of a system brings the modules closer to your roof. So uh, not only do you have less air circulation, which keeps your modules cooler and uh, more uh, efficient, but it also reduces the evaporation of moisture underneath of it, uh, of the solar modules, which would reduce the life of your roof and also increases the likelihood of buildup of materials underneath the solar modules because everything's so close, right? So, you know, if you have any debris, like one stick, you know, it could be clear for years and then you have one stick with branches get blown in during a storm and it's all the way underneath the whole array. And what does that do? It creates a dam. So everything else falling down and being washed down uh, leaves and debris and things like that over time and now you'll have this area that's just sitting there uh, damming water and holding water and moisture damaging your roof so be careful of that it's a, it sounds like a good idea and you know it's like everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel all the time say we've got the next biggest greatest thing but in, in actuality uh, um, most of the basic technology, the basic mechanics and things like that have already been thought out uh, in the rest of the building industry for years and decades and centuries actually. So uh, reinventing the wheel every day and, and saying that there's the next greatest biggest thing happens every once in a while but not as often and don't go with uh, uh, something that is just possibly flash in the pan. I think I answered the question. I hope so. If not, or if you uh, think of questions in listening to this, please comment below and uh, maybe we'll offer another video not related to um, this line of questioning. Thank you very much. Michael Brown, Solar Ray. Have a great weekend.